Hey, everybody. So I'm really, really jazzed and pumped today. I'm here with the man himself, with Ted Rubin. So Ted Rubin and I, we figured, you know, we're going to actually take between both of us. If there's an insufficiency of facts in any topic, we can absolutely fill all the voids of any facts that are missing with much more interesting trivia and commentary so as to round it out so it actually seems complete. Would you agree, Ted? Uh, absolutely. And if nothing else, we can make up some bullshit just to make it sound good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's what I wanted to do. The first thing I wanted to tackle was I recently ran across this and I was shocked from a branding standpoint. And I know that you'll have your viewpoint on it as well. But I recently ran across after Chipotle has had this whole series of health, you know, health related scares and outbreaks and blah, 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 all these various health problems in their stores consumer confidence has dropped down. And so recently, I, last weekend, I was in California and I ran across this thing, which I sent to you, which says basically culinary monster piece. And I saw that and I was like, I don't know who approved that, but they've got to basically have, they've got to basically have their head up their ass. That made no sense to me. I just wanted to get your take on this. You know, first of all, it really shows we're on the same page because I saw the same ad. And being that, you know, it's not my job to curate what we're doing here, yeah. uh, I, I didn't think about it. But I said, like, what are they thinking? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, and it goes to, I think, another conversation that you started briefly in an email with me about when to use humor, you know, in your advertising. And to me, it's certainly not after you just had a serious crisis. Yeah. You know, if, the seri if it wasn't a crisis that was about health, if it was some kind of ball that was dropped, or maybe an employee that did something foolish, or like what was it? I think it was Domino's when the guy took the video of himself standing on top of the meat, or one of the fast foods, yeah. and it was a stupid employee screw up. Yeah. You, know, you might want to make fun of something like that, you That's know? And, and, but we're talking about something that has serious health implications, yeah. that has tanked their stock, that has totally turned around their fortunes in the short term. And between you and me, I don't believe it will turn around their fortunes in the long term because I think they have a good product. I love their, their stores and their service. Yeah. But right now, I think they have to be a little bit more real about what the consumer's thinking about them. Because I got to tell you, I have passed at Chipotle a couple times and said, you know, I'll wait a little longer. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go back because I like it. But... I'm not in a rush. And then yeah. I see something like that and I say, these guys aren't taking this seriously. It's not about the joke. Yeah. It's about the fact that they need to restore consumer confidence. And you know, and not only that, it's almost a joke. Like one of the reasons I love their food is I think of it as being healthy. Yeah. And they're talking about, and this is this big and it has no sour cream or cheese in it yet. Like they just made me start thinking a sec. They really have. They made me start thinking, you know, maybe Chipotle, Chipotle isn't the healthy alternative. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they really, they went from being the darling that kind of really reinvented the sort of the fat that, you know, that fast casual type of, of space into, you know, I mean, and, and plus they had those, those, remember those couple of like incredible, vi beautiful viral videos that they had that were animated? Oh, uh, no. And, and I've, I've met the, the CMO and the team that put those together. Yeah. And it was incredible because what they did was a lot of things we talk about, about content. Give your consumer something of value. It doesn't necessarily have to be specifically about what you're trying to sell them, but, but about our process, how is food prepared, things that people are really concerned about in this day and age. But you know what I'm thinking? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this, and this is the way I view it. It's a, it's a Taco Bell wannabe. Yeah. Like they're looking at the crazy growth of Taco Bell, which is so opposite their brand because yeah. Taco Bell is crap and Taco Bell has done an amazing job of staying out of the crap conversation because they made it a fun young persons and you notice I'm staying away from the word millennial right. young persons type of product <laughs> and they're having fun with it. and I think Chipotle saying hey they've had luck with it you know our brand just got trashed let's go in this direction and I'm like eh. yeah 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 it's just it's amazing so what so what would be the takeaway I mean I mean for me the takeaway on something like this is is look no, you've got to know your dialogue. You've got to be able to know when you're in control of the dialogue and when you're not in control of the dialogue. And if something is of a real legitimate concern, it's like, okay, it's not enough to just occasionally have the CEO or senior management make a commentary that 
hey, we're doing our best, we're changing our policies, this, that, the other, but how are you, how did this come to be in the first place? Because I'll tell you, I mean, you and I both know, it's not the person that has all the answers that tends to be the, look like the smartest person in the room or the most legitimate or caring person in the room, but it's the one who asks the best and most amount of questions. And I think that that's what they have failed in the dialogue. That's my takeaway. What's yours? My takeaway is that they, they didn't bother going outside the conference room where they came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. Where one guy, who's the guy everyone's worried about going again, said, hey, I got a great idea. Let's be like Taco Bell. And the, the, the people that report to him were afraid to go, now that's really stupid, okay? Because they're afraid of that. And beyond that, they didn't bother stepping outside that boardroom to come up to people like you and me who love their product and say, how do you feel about our product right now? And what do you think we could do to, to fix that? You know, and one of these things used to happen all the time. I'd be in, in boardrooms or especially at agencies. And I guarantee you some agency came up with this stupid idea. No yeah. Yeah. And I was with John Andrews and we'd be somewhere and they'd say, hey, we got this great idea for this product for, you know, 26 year old new moms. And what do you think of it, John and Ted? And he'd, he'd look at me and I'd look at him and go, do we look like 26 year old new moms? Why are you asking us? Have you asked any 26 year old new moms? Whoa, that's an idea. So I think the real takeaway here is, is, is number one, listen, but number two, don't be afraid to go out and ask. And I don't mean in some controlled situation with a, with a moderator. I mean, get on the damn street and say, hey, how are you feeling about Chipotle? What do you think they could do to fix that? But when you open those conversations, the other, the other little tweak, this is a make break point, is ask the people that matter. Don't ask, don't ask like people who neither never have gone to your restaurant and, and don't care, or don't ask, like, you know, people who only go to do the stop at the convenience stop stations or the truck drivers that are never going to stop at your place. Don't ask the wrong people. Talk to the people who are the people who this actually impacts. Right. So, there you and, go. So, and, and don't be over obsessed with it because they might turn and tell you it really doesn't matter. Just keep doing what you were doing and pressing up towards the point that you have a good product and a good thing and let the rest of it go behind. But I think it's more, it's about asking it and listening and paying attention and not just coming up with that bright idea that ends up being incredibly stupid. All right, man. Well, awesome. I totally agree. We're on the same page. And uh, hey, let's go to, uh, I'll meet you at the end of the day. Let's go to Taco Bell, okay? <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Please hang up and try again.